This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. The Edmonton Oilers just keep on digging, and they have forced a game number six in the Stanley Cup Finals, and this game is in Edmonton for tonight. So a lot of intrigue as they could potentially pull off the comeback here. We're going to break down game number six of the Stanley Cup Finals between the Oilers and the Panthers by talking to Tom Vecchio for today, picking his brain on best bets for game six and talking some serious prices as well. Then later on, I'll talk Formula One in Spain and NASCAR in New Hampshire. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Join you to kick things off by Tom Vecchio. You can find Tom on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio one. Find his work at FanDuel Research and of course the FanDuel Podcast Network as well. Tom, uh, Thursday should be a fun one. We got game number six coming in hot. How you doing today? I'm doing good. I, uh, I'm a little bit worried, obviously. We, you know, we spoke uh, before the series began about the Panthers' money line, the Panthers, you know, minus one and a half on the series. But we also spoke about the Panthers winning the series four to two. So there are a lot of things in play for me today. So, like, as we go on, you know, we'll hit on some questions where, like, I have things pulling in potentially opposite directions. Uh, I obviously want them to win tonight. That could cash all the bets. But if they don't win tonight, which is a trend that we could see happen, <laughs> we lose one but still could win others. So there's, like, a, there's so many parts that we have to discuss today. Yeah, I did misspeak. The game is tomorrow, uh, so my yeah. bad on that. It is tomorrow night. Uh, to puck drop is at 7 o'clock Central, so 8 p.m. Eastern, so uh, should be a lot of fun. We'll get you ready a day in advance for Game 6, and again, we'll talk about series prices, as mentioned as well. We'll do, do all that here in just one second, but first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Covering in the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcast. Tomorrow, Dr. Ed Feng is back with us talking more Euro 2024 bets. We'll talk about some matches, early takeaways from the event so far, and where Ed sees value across FanDuel Sportsbook. That is tomorrow. As always, good stuff coming up next week as well. So, go search for Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts hit subscribe and if you like what you hear leave us a five-star rating and review as well and of course this show is up on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV plus dingers blasts moonshots whatever you call them everyone loves home runs with FanDuel's dinger Tuesdays you can love them even more that's right dinger Tuesdays are back for another season on America's number one sports book just bet on any player to hit a home run FanDuel will give you five dollars in bonus bets for every home run hit during that game as if you needed another reason to love the long ball. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. Bonus issued as non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Max bonus $25 per game. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, D.C., Iowa, Kentucky, Michigan, New Jersey, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, Vermont, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700. Or visit chaosgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland, 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia, 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope Y in New York. Now, Tom, Panthers get out to a 3 nothing early lead, and it kind of played into the, what you said, where defense wins out and that defense is stifling. The past two games... Very different. A lot of chaos, a lot of scoring, and two Edmonton wins. So they play fantastic hockey. I want to ask you, before we talk about the prices specifically, has there been anything different in those two games you've noticed that has led to this massive shift in the vibe of the series? Or is it just kind of the randomness you can get in small samples in hockey? Nothing has shifted. I, I will say maybe my darkest fear has come to light. You know, I spoke about before the series that 
you know, Barkov is uh, Sasha Barkov, the top line center for the Panthers, is amazing. He won the Selkie this year. He is literally the best defensive forward in the league. And we saw that through the first few games. McDavid only had three points through three games. Leon Dreisaitl had zero points through three, three games. So that deepest fear is that you can only contain McDavid for so long. He's like Otani. He's like Mahomes. It's like, yeah, he may struggle for a couple games. But eventually, yeah, the, the switch is going to flip. And we see Dreisaitl, he has two points in the last two games. But more importantly, McDavid has eight points over the last two games. And we did see Barkov get hit high in one of those games. He left early. He came back. So there is a very real uh, scenario where Barkov is playing, but he's actually not 100%. So nothing has changed. I still think the uh, the Panthers are a very good defensive team, but that may be taken down just ever by what percentage, we don't know. But it it may be uh, less efficient overall just because Barkov may not actually be at 100%. So nothing's changed overall. I expected McDavid to have his games, but now we're getting to like a a very worrying time for me based on some of the bets that I have. Right. And now the series goes back to Ed- and Edmonton as well. That's scary. Um, you don't know how quickly Barkov can kind of get back to 100% if he, if he is in fact playing less than 100%. But I think it is beneficial that like, on the one hand, they get two days off between games, but on the other hand, there's a massive, massive flight between there. So it's not exactly like a recovery time for the Panthers. So it's hard to know whether or not those ills the past two games will suddenly revert for game six. Right. That, that's that's part of what I've been thinking. Is like, no matter how good Barkov is, and again, if we decrease their defense, I guess, overall, because he's not healthy, eh, we're getting to some, some scary hours here for the right. Panthers. You did talk about their depth for the Panthers before the series, so that's definitely a plus to them. And if Barkov is not 100%, it's not all hope loss. But with those two wins for Edmonton, Edmonton is now plus 290 to win this series. Florida is minus 375. Obviously, we know, Tom, you've got the positions on the Panthers. But how are you viewing the series prices here if we assume that no one has any futures on this series already? I think there's clear value with the Oilers. I, I think there has to be, that has to be said. Like like you said, regardless of what I have in my positions for the Panthers, multiple ways, I think the Oilers are very clear. And and frankly, for the game six, uh, you know, tomorrow night, I don't think the best way to bet Edmonton is the money line. I think it's actually looking at the correct series scores there, where looking at Edmonton to win in seven games or the Panthers to win in seven games, I think that offers more value. Whichever way you think it goes, Taking the money line, which I think is what is a minus 120 for tomorrow, uh, the money line, if you think they win because they have all this momentum, and again, Barkov's not healthy, all these things are factoring in, the money line's not the best way to play it. I think going to a Panthers winning 4-3 or the Oilers winning 4-3, that's actually the route to go. So there's very clear value if you think the Oilers keep this momentum going and just objectively, again, if the Panthers aren't at 100%, this series is going seven games. That's just that's just is what it is, regardless of what bets I have already out there. So the series correct score, uh, Edmonton right now, it, to win 4-3 is plus 290. That's the same as their series price, because, again, that would be the exact same outcome. Right. Uh, the Panthers, 4-3 to three is plus 220. If you combine the implied odds of both those, you get to uh, around 56%, and the implied odds of minus 120, 54%. So I think there could be some value potentially in skirting that and taking the money line, but rather than taking both. But if you have a a position or you have a preference between the two, that's where it becomes more advantageous to take uh, either Panthers win 4-3 or Edmonton. So I would say specific outcome versus taking both seems to be the best route for the series prices right now. Right. And again, it depends on what positions people may or may not have coming into the series. So I'm kind of locked into where I am. So I don't I actually don't want to take Edmonton, but there is very clear value, I think, on their series price at this point. And again, that is plus 290 for them to win this series. Let's talk game six specifically on a Friday night out in Edmonton. As you mentioned, the Edmonton money line is minus 120 at FanDuel Sportsbook. Sounds like we're not taking that. But where do you see value for game six specifically, Tom? Uh, That's going to the Panthers for 10 plus shots in the first period, uh, which is sitting at minus 106. I would like to take some, some amount of comfort in knowing the Panthers I'm going to say played actually pretty well in game five. They had 3.10 expected goals. The Oilers were at 3.14, very close. They had 76 shot attempts compared to the Oilers at 39. And that resulted in 33 to 21 actual shots on goal in favor of the Panthers. So the Panthers did a lot of things right. They just didn't score and their defense was lacking. Also, the last goal to make it five to three was an empty net. 
So again, I want to take some amount of comfort as someone who's backed the Panthers heavily that they actually played pretty well. So I think they can keep that rolling. I also think road teams kind of need to weather that storm a little bit in the first period on the road. With a home crowd like Edmonton, they, the Panthers need to get off to a good start. So regardless of the scoring, I think the shot attempts and the shots on goal should be there for the Panthers. So they want to bring the energy early, take the crowd out of it, kind of tilt the ice at least a little bit early to start. And again, they they outshot them, outshot attempted them 76 to 39 in that most recent game. So this is playing along the lines of what they've done. They can they can control the pace of the play, uh, pace of play and get those shot attempts. And that's really what they need to do. Uh, I do want to clarify, it was not an empty net. Uh, Matthew Kachuk was sitting inside the net. So, right. come on, so he... uh, It was not empty. There was a full human being inside the net right. when that goal Slid was to save it, and then McDavid got it past him. Have you ever seen a cooler play that didn't matter? Um, it, there's probably got to be something in football where the, the Chiefs play last year where the – what was the play that got called back for? Oh, the the lateral to yeah yeah from from Kelsey. To, I don't remember who who scored, but yeah, where uh, was it? Lined up in the neutral zone, Rice. I think it was Kadarius Tony who was right. lined oh, up yeah, in yeah. the neutral zone. Yeah, that um, was a pretty cool play. That didn't matter though. But this was like to save the series, right, swats true. it away right before before the line. Like that was pretty sick. So for the for the point the. The sake of clarity, not an empty net. He was sitting there, and he is a full human being. We're not trying to erase you, Kachuk. We we see you, and you matter. Any other props you like for Game Six, Tom? That's really it. You know, mm-hmm. Sam Reinhardt, Carter Verhage. These players have been a bit up and down. You know, Verhage has been a ghost the series outside of Game One. Reinhardt's been pretty quiet. There's no player that we can trust overall. And if they're kind of just yeah. uh, spreading out the offense a little bit from Reinhardt, Evan Rodriguez, I, I just want to take the team overall. We can't nail it down to one specific player. All right, so the to- the bet that Tom likes most here for Game 6 is the Panthers to have 10-plus shots in the first period. That is minus 106, but also some consideration for uh, either the Oilers to win in uh, 4-3 at plus 290 or the Panthers to win in uh, 4-3 at plus 220, both those available over at FanDuel Sportsbook. That's all we got for Tom for today. You can find Tom on X at Tom underscore Vecchio1. Find his work over at FanDuel Research and the, um, the FanDuel Podcast Network. Tom, enjoy Game 6 tomorrow. Good luck to your Panthers tickets, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for having me. All righty. Again, you can find Tom on X at Tom underscore Vecchio one. Still plenty to break down for today. Then we're going to talk some Formula One and some NASCAR to close things up for today. Let's begin things on the Formula One side of things. Formula One is in Barcelona for this week, and that track is a very different track than what we've seen recently, where we had Monaco and Montreal, and both those tracks are street courses, and They have heavy curbing, and that's a tough thing for Red Bull, given how low their car is. And we've seen some struggles for Red Bull in those races. Verstappen did still win one of them, but they've been more vulnerable than they would have been previously. So different track. And when we go back to a more traditional circuit, it does boost Red Bull, or Verstappen at least, quite a bit in my model. I've got Max at 62% to win this race. So the model gives Max a lot of respect. His implied odds are his uh, betting odds of FanDuel Sportsbook are minus 240. So FanDuel giving Verstappen a lot of respect as well. But I'm still seeing value on Lando Norris. I've got Lando at 20% to win. And he is at plus 490 right now at FanDuel Sport. That is down from where he was on Tuesday when I wrote up uh, my win sims over at uh, FanDuel Research. He was plus 550 then, now down to plus 490, which is 17% implied. And again, I've got him at 20%. So still some wiggle room to see value in Lando. Lando was faster than Verstappen in Miami, maybe due to damage for Verstappen, but that accounts for the safety car and Lando was still faster. He finished second uh, behind Verstappen within a second of him in Imola. He also had better overall median lap times than Max in Canada, though Max is faster when the track was dry. And I don't care about what they did overall. I care more about the dry conditions. So Max overall better performance in Canada than what Lando had. That's why Max is a favorite and pretty, pretty high up there at 62% for me. But I do think that Lando still deserves respect. He's finished on the podium in four out of the past five races. I do show value him to finish on the podium at minus 190, but plus 490 to win is good value for me as well. I'm curious to see what Mercedes and Ferrari do in this race, given it's a more traditional circuit and their their improvements have come on less traditional circuits, but we'll see on that. But I think to me, it really does come down to Max versus Lando, and I want to go to the Lando side of things. Plus 490 to win a FanDuel Sportsbook, and again, the podium odds minus 190 also a value for me. 
Still seeing a bit of value on Pierre Gasly to finish inside the points as well. It's another bet that has moved since I uh, wrote things up over on Tuesday for the site. At the time, Gasly was plus 410. He's now down to 3-1 to one to finish inside the points. That's still a value for me. I have Gasly at 29%. He has finished inside the points in two out of three races since he got the upgrades for Alpine. He did downplay their chances in the media this week saying, you know, we've got no upgrades coming soon. Uh, other teams probably will. So he doesn't sound super optimistic and it is a shorter number than what we had on Tuesday. But for this race specifically, I am okay being above market on Pierre Gasly to finish inside the points. That is three to one at FanDuel Sportsbook. So the two F1 bets I like as of right now are going to be Lando Norris to win at plus 490 and Pierre Gasly to finish inside the points. That is three to one at FanDuel Sportsbook. Let's talk some NASCAR now. They are out in New Hampshire for this week. And we've seen a really interesting dynamic recently where there are a lot of drivers who can potentially win because it was all dominated by Joe Gibbs racing Hendrick Motorsports early on. They won the first eight races on non-drafting ovals. And it seemed like they would be the story of the entire year. Recently, though, Ford has improved, and that gives us a pretty large pool of drivers who can win, whereas it was like eight or so before. It's now quite a few. I have got eight drivers with win odds for this race between 7% and 9.8%, so a, a big grouping there, and it's big tier. You kind of see this tier at FanDuel Sportsbook because there are currently six drivers with win odds of plus 850 or shorter, so they also have a tier. I just had that tier being two drivers bigger. Those two drivers being Chase Elliott and William Byron. The, both those guys are 14 to 1 at FanDuel Sportsbook. So a big fall off behind Joey Logano at the bottom of the tier, plus 850. And I think that Elliott and Byron should be a bit higher. I got a bit of value on Byron. I'm at 7% to win versus 6.7%, but the better value is on Chase Elliott. So we'll take him to win 14 to 1 at FanDuel Sportsbook. I've got Elliott at 7.9% to win this race, up from 6.7% implied. It's a pretty good track for Chase. He was runner-up here back in 2022. We had 53 laps the year before that. And last year, things were not good. Uh, he really struggled, and the model knows that. But we've seen him and Hendrick Motorsports in general have much better form on short, flat tracks this year than what they were at the second half of last year. Elliott finished fifth in Richmond. He was third in Martinsville and third last week in Iowa. So the Fords and Toyotas will be tough. But Chase is a good value for me. I also do have value in him to finish top five at plus 220. So if you want to go that route instead, you definitely can do so. But best value for me is in Elliott to win plus 1400 at FanDuel Sportsbook. Couple of the drivers who are values for me for this week are Bubba Wallace and Daniel Suarez. Two different spots where I see value in Wallace. Uh, those are him to finish inside the top five at plus 550, and then Wallace to finish top 10 at plus 170. And both of those are pretty big values. So want to do a ladder system here where we put some on the top five, but the majority of the bet being in the top 10 to profit in case Bubba does get inside the top 10. It's been a really good track New Hampshire has for Wallace recently. He finished third here in 2022. He was eighth last year, and... It started this track, I think, started his turnaround on short flat tracks where he really, really used to struggle, but he's been a lot better on them. And that's true across Phoenix, Richmond, Martinsville, et cetera. He's been a lot stronger on this track type. It's a 23 race sample on short flat tracks for Wallace since the start of 2022. He has just six top tens, which is 26%, and only two top fives, which is 8.7%. But he's had good runs that have not resulted in good finishes. So, I think there's more upside than what he has shown for some positive regression here. Uh, I've got Wallace at 28% for a top five. That is uh, up from 15.4% implied. And I've got him at 53% for a top 10. That's up from 37%. So again, it is banking on some positive regression. And maybe you're thinking that's a bit of a leap too far for Wallace. But I do show value in him to win as well. I was on him last week. That did not go super well. But... I still think he's undervalued given he's done really well on this track, but also well on short flats overall recently. So we'll take Wallace top 10 plus 170 is the largest side of the bet. And then a bit on him to finish top five plus 550 at FanDuel Sportsbook. As mentioned, the other guy I show value on is Daniel Suarez. Suarez finished inside the top 10, five to one at FanDuel Sportsbook. Suarez was in the betting guide last week for Iowa. Saw value in him to finish top 10 after qualifying, and he came through for us. Finished inside the top 10 and basically ran there the entire day. So you add in the Iowa data, and Suarez becomes a pretty big value for me. I have him at 
29% finished top five, top 10 versus 17% implied. There are some similarities between Iowa and New Hampshire, not super, super similar. They're both short flat tracks, but Iowa, a little bit different. But I think it's encouraging to see that Suarez has run well at this track specifically. He finished ninth year last year uh, in 20, or I should say in 2022. He had good runs in the past two Phoenix races as well. But also Suarez had a pair of top tens back in the day here with Joe Gibbs racing, obviously very good equipment, but also when Suarez was a lot younger and a lot less refined as a driver than what he is right now. I think that Suarez is, is a, is a guy we can feel pretty good about at five to one. So wanted to go with him as our final bet for this week. So NASCAR bets. I like uh, Daniel Suarez, top 10, five to one Bubba Wallace, top five at plus five fifty, and Bubba Wallace, top 10 at plus one seventy, And then Chase Elliott as a loan outright. He is 14 to one over at FanDuel Sportsbook. That is all that we have here for today on covering the spread. Want to give another big thank you to Tom Vecchio for joining us. Find Tom on X at Tom underscore Vecchio one. I am on X at Jim Sonis. You can also find FanDuel Research on X at FanDuel Research. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets across tonight. And we'll talk to you once again tomorrow. Talking some more Euro 2024. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 